Hey, welcome back to True Moto Resto. And on this video, we're going to continue putting the uh, CB900F together and uh, do the front fork rebuild, uh, maybe the uh, finish the brakes if everything gets here in time. And uh, yeah, just generally putting things back together a bit at a time. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, so I've uh, I've been at this game for the entire afternoon. I kind of I rebuilt the uh, the master cylinder, and I couldn't get anything. Uh, I couldn't get any pressure at all. So then I put the old stuff back in it, and uh, that was even worse. It was just kind of getting hung up in there. The uh, this this old one of these was getting hung up. So right now I've got the old one of these in there, and the new one of these in there. I am starting to get some uh, <clears throat> some pressure, but the, and I'm basically starting to easy. I had these all the way compressed in, so now I'm able to get them to, to pump out. The problem is, uh, still with the master cylinder, I, if I, I can get one one pump out of it, see, there we go. And if I push it again, I get nothing, unless I wait a second or two. So I wait about 10 seconds, and then I'll get another successful Pump. I had to put a new a temporary because I haven't got my new brake lines yet uh, and the other one the rubber one the original was completely clogged uh, I couldn't get any even air to pass through it so I've this is an old spare one I have just to put on to get it get this thing uh, bled and get them to pop out now if I push it again now you'll see see uh, if I wait you know a good 30 seconds it'll it'll pop again so I think what that means is the the spring in there is taking a while to push the plunger assembly back down to give me a full stroke so um i'm gonna i have to take that apart because uh heaven knows we all need a full stroke we're getting closer um you yeah, got one out but even with this piston this far out i'm having a hell of a time i've got my uh pullers here they fit inside and I cannot budge it so unfortunately I'm gonna to have to resort to uh, more caveman measures got them out once I got a good grip on them there they did come out so, yeah now this needs to be thoroughly cleaned new seals to go in there and what a mess all right, so I think I figured out what I did wrong on that master cylinder. Here's the old one. And uh, you can see the way the seal is oriented. It's kind of the, the flared end is this way around. Right? It's on this side. And I knew that that's the way it was supposed to go. But when I installed the seal on the new one that came in the kit, it was, I guess I had such a wrestling match with the damn thing to get it on that I ended up with the flared in on this side so which meant that it wasn't uh it wasn't returning because it, when it, it sits in here like this so when you let go of the uh, the brake pedal basically this thing wants to move back out so when you push the brake pedal this creates the pressure and and then it also makes it so it returns easier with the spring that's inside and my guess is that uh, yeah that just with this facing the wrong way it was it was binding to come back and when it was pushing forward i wasn't creating any pressure so that's my theory um when i took it all apart again that thing was flipped around so it's the only thing i could see as being the problem so i have these in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and uh, this one which is the one that was probably leaking the worst uh, most of the paint just came right off i give it a bit of a scrape and cleaning after this one isn't too bad. It'll get painted as well anyway. And then this is the rear brake. So uh, actually this one hasn't been in the ultrasonic cleaner yet, but it will. So I'm not gonna film putting every last nut and bolt back on this because that, uh, that would probably just be boring. So uh, I'm just gonna do a few shots uh, of the bike as it goes back together. I might time lapse a couple of things here and there. Um, and then I'll just kind of interject with uh, you know what I'm doing and as things go um 
just a couple of key points. That was a huge pain to get back on. I don't know if you've ever stretched one of those before to get it back on. It is absolutely brutal. I ended up using my, uh, I have a spring puller, which I still, I couldn't pull. Um, so I ended up uh, putting a ratchet strap around the handle of the string puller, of the spring puller, and ratcheting to that bar on the on the lift. Had uh, an extra pair of hands with me here to stabilize the bike, and then I just kept cranking with the ratchet strap until I could get that spring on. It was the only two of us tried to pull it on manually. I even used a foot stirrup, uh, which I made to put on springs before I couldn't get it to budge so uh yeah that's the way that had to go the other thing I've I figured I'm gonna have to make is this is the uh, the center stand and if you listen that's the center stand hitting the uh, the swing arm and normally that wouldn't be a problem because right here I've got tape on at the moment but right there is the um I'll call it a standoff um, and that basically would normally touch the, there's a little uh, lug or a standoff on the bottom of the, the muffler. And that basically keeps that center stand from contacting the swing arm. Now I'm going to be putting a different silencer and exhaust system on this bike, which will be on this side. So I'm going to have to, have to manufacture something to keep this a little bit further down. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to attach something between these two um, bolts here. I'll make a little bracket to go down there just to, to keep that down just enough that it doesn't uh, bang on the swing arm uh, and whatnot. So, Okay, so next step is I'm going to uh, work on the wiring harness. So all this should need is a good cleaning because it's all kind of gross and disgusting like the rest of the bike was. So then I'm going to use a uh, SC1 high gloss coating for that just to clean up the uh, the plastic or the taped taped loom and then I'm going to use uh, some electrical contact cleaner and some dielectric grease just to clean up all of the uh, the contacts because there's a good chance that some of the especially the I find the, the female connectors tend to get a little bit more corroded than the uh, in the male connectors so these ones don't look too too bad in here but everything will get cleaned anyway uh, there's no point in putting it back together without giving it a shot of cleaner on there yeah but generally just clean everything up and then uh, we can get that put back in the bike <laughs> So as I've said before, when I'm reassembling, I just go in reverse order through my notes that I took it apart. And as I get each step done, I just check it off. And then once I've done that entire page, check mark at the top tells me that I've not got anything left to do. Uh, whereas in a couple of them, um, there's still something to do there because I've got to go back and uh, I just put here that I have to torque a couple of things. So I just make notes as I go. Next is the triple clamp. Wiring harness is back in. It's not completely in place yet. I don't want to get this uh, too buttoned up until I get the uh, the battery box back in there. Uh, coils are back on. New plugs in it. Uh, starter is back in. Starter cover is back on. So, uh, and the oil cooler has been uh, bolted back up. 
So uh, next things I gotta do, I gotta put the triple clamps in as I said next, and then I also have to disassemble uh, this battery box, take the igniters off, and uh, this whole thing needs to be clean, stripped, and repainted before it goes back in. So triple clamps back on. I just got my usual piece of tape around here just to remind me that I still have to torque that down once the uh, forks go back in. So that'll be next. So I've taken the, uh, the calipers completely apart. Slide pins and the, uh, the rubber grommets are out, all the seals are out of all of them. So before I set about painting uh, the outside, what I'm gonna do is, well, this one, this one was really, really badly leaking, which is why all the paint came off so easily. Uh, the rest of them will get kind of sanded down. They're not been done yet. Um, but what ha what does have to happen is now that I've removed the seals, uh, there's a lot of corrosion. Not a lot, but there's corrosion in behind where those seals sit. So I want to clean all that stuff out and make sure that those uh, those bores, those pots there for the uh, for the pistons, are nice and clean. Um, I do have pistons, new pistons, and new seals for the front calipers. Pistons and seals for the rear caliper are on the way, and all new brake lines are on the way. So I'm not sure exactly what tools uh, you're supposed to use to clean out these uh, seal grooves, but I'm using these uh, seal picks here, being very careful not to uh, not to scratch anything. Kind of different angles on them, just that way you can get into all of the. The nooks and crannies and whatnot, but I just uh, I just find like being able to get up inside here and there's so much corrosion. This is the rear caliper that I had so much trouble getting the pistons out of, and, and given the amount of corrosion I've pulled out of those grooves, uh, it's not surprising. Um, some of it is still in the bottom there of the uh, of the cylinder, but uh, it's slowly coming clean. I, I'm trying to make sure that I don't. You know, unduly scratch any of the surfaces there and I just think it's going to be helpful to uh, just to put these all back in the in the ultrasonic cleaner again just to uh, make sure they're as clean as they can be all right so I just give it a shot of the uh, the corrosion on the inside of that uh, cylinder see where it's kind of darker there on the you can see it on the uh, the back side of the other one as well. So that's basically what I'm using. Uh, using 800 emery paper with a WD-40 on it to uh, to sand that out because I can feel that with my fingertip. It's quite quite a rough surface, and and it does explain some scoring there too. I'm not too worried about the scoring. I think because <clears throat> the uh, the seal that goes in there, the new seals will be will keep everything. Everything's sealed up, I assume. Um, same, I don't know, it's interesting, the same three marks are in both of those cylinders. I'm not sure why that would be, but anyway. All right, so I've kind of honed out the cylinders. They're not perfect, but there's no rough spots uh, to the touch anymore. Um, you can still see a few dark spots here and there, but when I feel around there, there's it's very, very smooth. All the rough sections are now gone. So I think I'm going to uh, call that good. I've been going at it for quite a while with the 800 and the 1000 to get those polished up. So uh, the still, although the, the grooves are, are pretty much cleaned out, there's still a little bit of cleaning left to do there. But I'm going to throw these back in the ultrasonic cleaner just to get uh, a lot of it's all loose. It just, it's just hard to get it out. So Okay, so uh, fork seals. There's a... Uh probably a thousand fork seal videos out there on YouTube. So um, I'm not gonna go through a full detailed uh, breakdown and step-by-step -step in this video. There's tons of them out there, um, but I'll just kind of touch on and highlight a, one or two things as I go along the way. All right, so my first uh, first step is gonna be to remove the, uh, the bolt in the bottom. And to do that, I'm just gonna use my air impact gun with uh, the Allen wrench on it just to shock that loose. Um, 
I usually try to get that out first because once I take the cap off and the tension comes off the rod inside there, it makes that much more difficult to remove. So I'm hoping um, I can just uh, zip that off. Well, we're not off to a good start. Um, the uh, Allen bolt in the bottom of there has just stripped out. Um, impact gun uh, didn't work. The uh, Johnson bar didn't work. I mean, it is in there. I it's, It looks like somebody Loctite it in there, which is, you don't need to be doing that. Uh, so this is just going to turn into be a, a giant pain in the ass. Right, so the uh, the right side came out no problem at all. I just set up there up to drain, uh, but unfortunately, this left one is uh, is completely euchred. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of choice uh, except to drill that out and use an extractor, I think, and then have to get a new uh, Allen bolt for that son of a gun. All right, well, after uh, drilling and heating the snot out of it with my propane torch, it is finally coming out. There is never, ever, ever a good reason for cranking those bottom damper bolts in that tight. Hand tight with a new gasket. A new crush washer is all you need. You don't need the gobs of Loctite and uh, an impact gun to put those things back on. Uh, completely unnecessary. So please don't do that. So um, the only thing I will show you here is just one of the things I always do is I, I like to lay everything out. So one side for the left uh, fork, uh, the other side for the right fork. And then basically everything gets laid out in the order that it came out. Uh, and that way um, you don't lose anything. Um, as you see probably on, a, on every video done out there, when you when you tip the fork leg up and point this end down to get the, the spring out and to get out the damper rod, and in this case is a spring, um, it's a good idea to have your fingers over here because not the internals on every fork are not the same. So on some of them, there's a like a it's like a cap metal thimble type of thing that goes over the end of here instead of a spring, um, and inevitably, if you start pouring the, you know, the sometimes people will take off the top cap and pour it the fluid. In this case, I took out the bottom drain uh, bolt and let the fluid drain out that way. But if you're dumping it out and you haven't got your fingers over there, inevitably the, some of the internals could potentially drop into your oil pan and either go unnoticed or if you do find them and fish them out then you're left wondering which way around they went so um, just be careful stick your fingers over there as you're draining it if you're draining it that way or if you're tipping it up to remove the spring and the damper rod keep your fingers over okay so the uh, forks are disassembled um, not really I mean if you've if you've done this before this is this is about as easy as a set of forks gets, you know, aside from dealing with stuck damper rod bolts, but they're pretty simple. Um, even though the manual that I have says, uh, you know, you can't take these things apart without special equipment uh, nonsense, it's uh, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, getting these separated from uh, the lower fork leg um, with pulling the bearing out and the seal, uh, just basically using a slide hammer approach to bang it in out once you take out the... Uh, the uh, ter circlip there, fairly simple. And uh, so I'm basically my approach now is I'm gonna clean all of this stuff, uh, of course, except for the seals, which are gonna get replaced. Uh, the lower fork legs are gonna get repainted. So I'll be cleaning those off and they'll have to be uh, fully dry before they go back together. And then, uh, yeah, not too, uh, not too crazy. It was just unfortunate that uh, I had to deal with that damper rod bolt, but you know, that's what happens with you working on the old bikes. I did find another one. I have a spare here. It's slightly different. It doesn't have a smooth shank section uh, at the top, but I don't think that matters. I may see if the, the guy down the road has one of these anyways, but uh, I'm, if I'm stuck, I can still use that. With it. This came out of another set of forks, uh, VFR, uh, as, as I recall. 
So it's the next day. And I have, uh, I painted these yesterday and let them dry overnight. These are now ready to go. And as I mentioned briefly yesterday, uh, the thimble, or it's called an oil lock, I guess, um, it was inside here. Both of them were stuck to the bottom. So once I got to the point of cleaning everything out properly, they they were retrieved, so they are there. Um, got the new seals and the dust cap ready to go on. New crush washers on those items as well. Now, the one thing I did read, uh, maybe I should stand corrected here. Um, in the manual, it says to apply a Loctite to these things, which I've never ever done, and I don't think I'm gonna do it this time either. Um, it just seems very, very strange to me. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, I've never done it before. I'm not gonna start now. But uh, I don't know, let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you apply Loctite to your uh, damper rod bolts? I just put a new crush washer on there and that should seal it up just fine. I probably will uh, anneal those though because I haven't done that yet. But uh, yeah, that's what it says in the manual. So I'm just going to anneal the uh, the crush washers for the, uh, for the forks. Um, I just like to anneal the copper washers so they seal a little bit better. Uh, you do that whether it's for um, engine cases and whatnot. It just uh, softens the copper, gets, uh, gets a better seal. There's no point in uh, especially with things like engine cases and forks and that kind of stuff. You don't want that stuff leaking. Just heat enough to heat it up enough to get it nice and red. Okay, so as far as putting the uh, the stuff back together and putting the seals in, uh, normally I like to use uh, my seal driver set. So I got this one, which does a variety of sizes. Um, I've got fork seal bullets. These kind of go over top of the top of the chrome stanchion here, just to protect the uh, the new seals going on. Unfortunately, these start at thirty six millimeter which doesn't do me any good because those are 34 and these also start at 36 millimeter, which doesn't do me any good. So I'm going to be going back to my homemade seal and uh, bushing driver. So this, this is just two sections of um, ABS or PVC and PVC pipe. A couple of gear clamps on there just to be able to tighten it down. And so the idea is Use this end with a black pipe to drive the, the bushing in. You basically just slide this on and uh, clamp it down onto the onto the tube. And then you just bang the tube in and uh, take it off and turn it around this way, which has the uh, gray PVC protruding, and use that to drive the, the seal in. So this is good. I used this on my RGV when I had it. Uh, I made it up for that, but it works well on the 34 mil. And because I don't have... Uh, Bullets. I'm just going to clean the ends of these off and just put a bit of black electrical tape on there. The usual uh, rubber uh, grease on the uh, fork leg and then the seals. That will help. And then when I put it all together, I like to get that uh, damper rod bolt snugged up as much as I can uh, before I assemble the spring, obviously, because you want to. I want to put the fluid in um, before all of this stuff goes back together and the cap goes on and it's a lot easier to tighten that when everything is assembled. So what I normally do is I'll insert this, it's just a broom handle with a point sharpened on it. And by the time you get the damper rod in, this will, you can stick this down inside the damper rod and hold it from turning. And it just kind of gives me enough uh, friction to, uh, to get enough, uh, enough of a bearing on that bolt so it will seal and I don't have to worry about it leaking. And then once I get it all together, I can give it a final snug up and it should be okay. So the other thing I've done before I've started the reassembly is to clean these uh, uh, chrome fork tubes. And like a lot of the old bikes, especially the, you know, they've been kind of left for a long time. You do get um, some rust pits here and there, especially I find up in between where the, uh, the upper, upper and lower triple clamps are. So if I kind of zoom in here, you can kind of see 
here where there was a bunch of pits. And so what I did was I have a very small, fine file. And I just ran that over anywhere where there was any, I could feel anything at all and knocked, knocked it all down. And then I took some very fine emery paper and WD-40 and just smoothed all of that out because while the fork, <clears throat> the fork seal, uh, when it's assembled, isn't going to be riding up and down on that. It's, it's kind of riding down here somewhere. Um, you still got to get the fork seal over the top here and move it all the way down to get it seated. So you don't want to damage the seal uh, just when you're first putting it on. And those are really sharp uh, where the chrome kind of starts to peel off, where it's starting to rust a little bit. And that will quite easily damage um, one of those fork seals. So, <clears throat> so that's what I do. I just kind of smooth everything off. I kind of run my fingers over everything just to make sure there's no areas of concern and uh, that way the you know the, the new seals are going to last a whole lot longer and you don't uh, you don't tear them before you've even put it back on the bike okay so uh, right uh, the right fork leg is all back together there's uh, oil in there and it's back in the uh, the triple clamp and uh, this one I'm just going to put the uh, fork oil in it Put the cap on and then uh, it's good to go in there as well so uh, the one mistake I made and uh, those uh, oil locks you know, that thimble type thing that goes on the end of the damper rod um, I actually slid I actually put the the upper and lower fork together and then put that on the damper rod because that's what the manual said um, when I took it all apart it was stuck in the bottom here and I had just, you know, following the manual, I assumed that it would actually slide right through the bottom of this, but it doesn't. You actually have to put it inside here or put it in the bottom of this before you put the damper rod in. So I had to disassemble it and put it back together again. So anyway, uh, that small error aside, uh, we're just about done here with the forks. All right, front forks are back on, all rebuilt, and hopefully that's good to go. Um, so yeah, just the one little misstep there with the uh, the oil locks, putting them in the wrong order. Um, I should have just done it the way they came apart, uh, and I didn't. So uh, don't forget, I'm not a professional here. I'm still, you know, I'm fumbling my way through this uh, like any home hobbyist. So just a learning process every time you go through something. Although I've done forks so many times, it's uh, and it's just, I don't know. Everybody buggers things up once in a while. But anyway, we're we're all back together and good to go. And next is going to be the brake calipers. But unfortunately, uh, I'm still waiting for parts. That could be a week or so away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call time on this video. And uh, we'll pick it up again uh, in maybe next week when uh, all the parts for the brake calipers are in. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you soon. And hopefully, hopefully we can get some wheels back on this thing really soon.